Happy Sunshine family! We're back for part two of the Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe detention hearing transcript. This hearing was on August 29th, 2017 in the United States District Court, Eastern District for Tennessee in Knoxville. Right now it's 1.27 p.m. Saturday, September 16th. 2017. Let's head on over to the detention hearing transcript. Oh, you know what? I actually got a workaround so that you can see my indicator. All right, so yeah, okay. It used to be green, now it's kind of uh, a purpley pink. But I kind of like highlighting the pauses with this. Okay, we left off between, well, we got through page 12, and what's going on is Cynthia Davidson, the U.S. attorney, is reminding the judge, Judge C. Clifford Shirley Jr., that Heather Antucci has not been sworn in yet, and you're asking a lot of questions of her, which she's answering. And so the judge replies that he's going to swear her in. So if you would, Miss Tucci Giraffe, if you'd raise your right hand, please, ma'am. Okay. And the courtroom deputy picks it up. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. If so, please say, quote, I do, end quote. It's interesting that this So Help You God is in here. The One of the prior, or maybe both of the prior transcripts, I can't quite remember, uh, does not include So Help You God. And now it is here. So I find that interesting. We had a little bit of a discussion about the meaning or change in meaning of anybody's testimony based upon the oath, the verbatim oath that they give, and the verbatim oath that they give has not been included in some of the transcripts that we've been reading through. It is here, and I think that's important. It wasn't before. So Heather replies, I am the source of all that is. And the court reporter says, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Heather says, I am the source of all that is. I swear to speak true, accurate, and complete. <laughs> oh, wow, this is funny, guys. Oh, Judge Shirley, he's... We, we, already, we already know that he doesn't appear to be happy in there. And he is... making it difficult for Heather and Heather's team. He's cut off Mr. Lloyd a few times. So now Judge Shirley says, I don't know what that means. I didn't ask you what your source was. We just asked you if you're going to swear or if you're going to affirm that you will tell the truth. And Heather says, I just said I swear to speak true, accurate, and complete. Judge Shirley says, is that different? Heather says, yes. Well, what is it? What's the difference about that and telling the truth? Well, the truth is a matter of perception, whereas speaking true, accurate, and complete gives you a full, accurate record. Judge asks, but it's not necessarily the truth? Heather replies, it is the truth. I only speak truth. True, accurate, and complete. Well, then I ask you, will you affirm to tell the truth? I'm not trying to be difficult here. I'm saying that I will speak only true. And then she gets cut off. <laughs> Judge says, you are being difficult. And Heather continues. And complete, 
You are being difficult because I just ask you if you will tell the truth. I will speak truthfully, is what Heather's reply is. And is that different than telling the truth? Heather says, no, it's the same thing. Okay. Heather continues, the truth, anyway. That's good. Telling the truth and speaking truthfully are the same thing. Heather says, the other version means that there is room for perception. There's room for not speaking truth. True, accurate, and complete. I'm telling you I speak only true, accurate, and complete. All right. So when you told me you had a JD, is that truthful? It is true, and it is truthful. Okay. And when you said you had canceled your license and quit practicing in 2011, was that true? That is true and truthful. And when you said you represented yourself in a criminal case in the state of Washington, was that true? That is true and truthful. All right. And have you represented anybody else in a criminal case? I used to be a prosecutor for the state of Washington. So yes, during my 11 years, I have defended as well as prosecuted criminals. And how long were you a prosecutor? From, well, I was a defender from, court, Judge Shirley asks, a defender or prosecutor? Well, first I was a public defender. Okay, for about four months, December, excuse me, January, approximately January of 2003 until May of 2003. Then from May of 2003, I was a prosecutor until February of 2006. All right, have you ever been involved in any cases in federal court like this? No, I haven't. Or just state court? Just state court. Do you realize that you are charged in this court with a crime referred to as money laundering? I am aware of the allegations made by, I'm sorry, judge says, in the indictment. Heather says, yeah. I just need to be sure that you understand, says Judge Shirley. Heather replies, I've read the allegations in the true bill. Okay, I'm not asking you to agree to them. I'm just asking if you understand them. Do you realize that if you're found guilty of that crime that you could face a certain number of years? How many years in prison in this case? Cynthia Davidson pipes up. Up to 20 years imprisonment. Judge Shirley says, up to 20 years in prison. And what's the fine? Cynthia Davidson says, it's $500,000 or twice the actual loss. Judge says, okay, do you understand that if you're found guilty, you could receive up to either of those? Heather says, as with this answer and the other answers, with reservation to the matter of jurisdiction, to let us handle, I am aware of what the USA is speaking of. Yes, the terms and the judge cuts her off. All right, you realize that if you're found guilty of more than one of these crime, but there's only one charge, right? So there's no concerns about the consecutive sentencing? Miss Davidson says, yes, as to Miss Tucci Giraffe, there is only one charge, the conspiracy. So it's interesting that Judge Shirley starts this off by saying, you realize you are charged in this court with a crime referred to as money laundering. So, I don't understand how the judge is saying this. He's obviously got charging documents. He knows what this case is about. And he's referring to it as money laundering, but yet, 
down here we find out that no, it's only a conspiracy charge. Page 17, line 3, only one charge, the conspiracy. All right, you realize, Miss Tucci Giraffe, that if you choose to represent yourself, as you're asking, you're on your own. And I mean by that, I can't tell you how to try your case. I can't give you any legal advice or any advice on how to try the case. Do you understand that? I'm aware of those issues, yes. Okay. Heather continues, I am aware of what you're stating, and I get that I would be on my own. Court says, is that different than understanding? Heather says, yes, I am aware. I am aware of everything that you are speaking to, and judge cuts her off. But you don't understand it, because if you don't understand it, I can't let you represent yourself. Heather says, okay. I mean, that's what the rule says, and it's very simple. Heather says, yes, and I get the implications, and I understand the implications of the word understand, that word inside quotes. So I am aware, and I am agreeing, that I am going to be going forward and doing my own case. Do you realize I can't tell you what to do or how to do it? I'm... I am aware of that, and I agree to that. Okay, are you familiar with the federal rules of evidence? It's been a while, so I'm going to have to refresh myself on the federal rules of evidence. I can take it you realize that the federal rules of evidence will govern what evidence may or may not actually be introduced at trial, and in representing yourself, you have to abide by those rules. Again, he's, he's using this term, representing yourself. And I'm not quite sure if he's trying to put words in her mouth because Heather has said, I am presenting as myself. And he keeps saying, representing yourself. With reservation to the jurisdiction issue that we still have to handle, Yes, I am aware. Judge Shirley continues, always going to have the jurisdiction issue, so don't even raise it again. Wow. Wow. I will always let you file that motion as soon as we leave the court today, but we're going to play by the federal rules of evidence with regard to evidence that comes in this court. Do you understand that? Wow, this is huge, guys. Judge Shirley is setting up the stage here. The evidence that Heather wants admitted are all those UCC filings. And Judge Shirley is talking about the rules by which he is going to go by in this hearing for what can be admitted as evidence. Heather says, I'm aware of that and I agree to that. Court says, pardon? I am aware of the federal rules of evidence that will govern this particular case and I agree to use those rules. All right. And do you understand, if you're not familiar with them, that it can be a problem because you might not get something in evidence? Here we, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's, what, well, foreshadowing is what I feel. We'll hope not. We hope her stuff gets admitted into evidence. I am aware of that as well, Heather replies. All right. Are you familiar with the federal rules of criminal procedure? Again, it's been a while since I've had to. Judge cuts her off. Do you realize that the rules of criminal procedure govern the way that this court will handle a criminal action here in federal court? I'm aware that's how this court proceeds and how they do all their matters, yes. Okay. Do you understand that if you decide 
decide to take the witness stand and decide to testify that you'll have to present the testimony by generally asking questions of yourself. I am aware of that and have experienced that. All right, so that there's a proper procedure for objections and things like that. You understand that? I'm aware of that, yes. All right, it's imperative for me to advise you that, in my opinion, that you would be far better off to be represented by a trained lawyer than you would be to represent yourself. I think it's unwise of you to try to represent yourself in this type of case where the stakes are high. I don't believe you are familiar with the federal rules as much as you need to be. I don't believe you're as familiar with the court procedure as you ought to be. And I would strongly urge you not to represent yourself. That's just my opinion and my suggestion to you. But in light of that, and in light of the penalty you might suffer if you're found guilty, and in light of all the difficulties of representing yourself, is it still your desire to represent yourself and give up the right to be represented by an attorney instead? Heather replies, again, I am aware of my capabilities. I am aware of my capacity to be able to take in new material or to refresh myself in old material and my ability to be able to pre present it as needs to be presented while conforming or practicing the particular rules that you have set forth that are going to govern these proceedings. Judge says, uh-huh. So I'm very comfortable with in fact, I prefer it at this time. Judge says, fair enough. Again, with Mr. Mr. Lloyd's assistant, administerially. And then SIC in parentheses. Referring to the word ministerially. The judge surely says, okay, so it is still then your desire to represent yourself and give up your right to be represented by an attorney. Heather says, it is my preference and it is my choice that I'm going to implement to move forward as myself, to present as myself and to present this case by my own. And then judge is cutting her off. Is it going to be that any descriptive is it going to be that any descriptive word I use you're going to pick another word you know after you get it's really and then he cuts her off because I've tried so hard to be and then Heather cuts off the judge I'm just trying to create the record here that's all if there's any corrections I can go ahead and go back and file corrections to anything. I'm just figuring out if I say, is it your desire to represent yourself? And then Heather says, it is my desire to move forward. Judge says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Heather says, I'm sorry, I'm answering questions. I desire to move forward and I choose to move forward and I implement that choice now to move forward by myself as myself. Judge says, and I'm going to let you. I'm just trying to figure out if I say, as I've said, Heather says, yeah. Judge says, to, I'm sorry. Heather says, please. Judge says, can I finish? Heather says, no, please. Thank you. If I say to you, do you desire to represent yourself? Most everybody I've had before says, quote, yes, end quote. You won't say yes because you want to change wording. Okay. And what I'm trying to figure out, you say, quote, I want to make the record, end quote. Does that mean that the record you're making is of something other than a choice to represent yourself? Because if it is, you need to tell me that now. Heather says, no, I, your honor, my record is just to establish that I am here, I am present, and I am moving forward as myself. Because of the legal standings, I agree that, 
Excuse me, I acknowledge that you and I disagree as to legal standings between pro se, pro per, sui juris, and all of that. I get that. So I'm just explaining to you that I will be moving forward as myself, not representing myself on behalf, excuse me, not representing on behalf of myself, but representing or presenting, presenting as myself to the court speaking truthfully true accurate and complete you know guys all so let me finish your sentence here so yes just to make it easy yes this whole back and forth between heather and the judge is about the word representing versus presenting the judge wants to lock her in to using the word representing heather wants to use the word presenting now, most of the time, any word that you stick an RE on the front of, it means to do that action again. Like redo, recalibrate. And so Heather can present herself but if she has an attorney, the attorney must re-present Heather. So Heather would have to present herself to her attorney so that the attorney could then re-present on her behalf. And Heather is not acting as her attorney. She, if she is, I, I have a feeling if she is re-presenting herself, then then she has stated that it's her shell corporation that is up there in the courtroom. But a real person can present themselves. And so we got an awful lot of back and forth between Heather and the judge about one word. And just colloquially, in the United States, in our mainstream consciousness, there's probably not too many people that would pick up this transcript and read it and really have much of a meaning change in their mind if they read a sentence that uses the word presenting instead of representing or representing. The mainstream working definition inside our minds of the collective consciousness really puts those two words into the same definition. And we can see here that Judge Shirley wants Heather to identify with represent and does not want to hear the word present and has said anytime I use a word are you gonna change words on me and if you'll remember his statement from the prior video part one where he says just let us do this let's go back and find that that's important. I think this will just go better if you just let us do this. All right, so we started on page 12. Here it is. So it's at the end of page eight. I'm going to allow you to file any motions you want to file on jurisdiction and will. I've got a good organization here. So I think if you stick with me and just let us do this, just let us do this. He just wants to do his own thing up there, guys. And he keeps telling everybody that. 
and is acting like he's short on patience when Heather is just trying to get some very specific verbiage onto the record. All right, I think this is a good place to, to press the pause button for now. We are at the end of page 22. Thank you so much for all of your emails. Oh, I can put on my little splash screen here to, there we go. Yeah, thank you so much for the emails and the comments. All the love light and links that are coming in are very welcome and very interesting. If you have any love lighter links for me, send them to lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E -E, at protonmail.com. We'll be back soon with part three of the detention hearing transcript.